Welcome back to our 50 years of Jet 24 golden anniversary special. It has been incredible to see the history of Jet 24 and how it's evolved from the beginning to this point. Absolutely, and also to see how some major local events and stories unfolded right on the air. It's the late 80s and the early 90s. We'd also see technological changes as well as changes in personnel. Yeah, it's a, a pretty big time for me. I started my career here during that period as a reporter at City Hall. Cloudy day. This past decade was one of change in the field of health. The political battles of the Cold War. January 22nd, 1987. A shocking scene unfolds on television across the country as Pennsylvania Treasurer R. Bud Dwyer shoots and kills himself during a televised news conference. More drama unfolds on live TV later in the year as the media follows the story of Jessica McClure. For days, the young girl trapped in a well in Midland, Texas, is rescued on live TV. In the Jet 24 newsroom, a new face hits the air in 1987. Reporter Teresa Merglin begins her TV career here immediately after graduation from IUP. I was actually 20 years old, first day out of school, graduated, came here. My dad dropped me off in Erie and I started working part time at Jet. It was pr at a pretty amazing time to be able to do that and jump right into television. And it was a real blessing and a lot of fun. Teresa worked at Jet 24 just shy of 15 years and she did everything here from report forecast the weather, and anchor the news. Just a lot of laughs, a lot of memories, just a great group of people to work with. Teresa is now the executive director of Africa 6000 International. Cleveland, Ohio, December 18, 1988. Jet 24's Mike Gallagher leveled in the Cleveland end zone near the infamous dog pound. I do not go a week without somebody saying to me, Aren't you the guy run over by the Cleveland Brown? I was on the field so long that fans started pelting me with snowballs and dog bones. And in the days before the internet, the story went viral. The hit resulted in nearly 40 surgeries over the next decade. Mike's mishap changed the rules when it comes to shooting on the sidelines, and it changed a lot in his life, too. It's certainly a part of my life. It's a part of who I am, but the reality is for me, but as Jet TV celebrates 50 years in my 30 year career here, that my ultimate moment was being run over in a Cleveland Browns football game. In 1989, the face of City of Erie politics changed forever. For the first time in 24 years, a new mayor was elected. Erie City Councilwoman Joyce Savacchio cruised to victory in the mayoral election, becoming the first woman elected to lead the city. This was my hometown, and and it had been so good to myself and my parents that that was a better way of giving back. Mayor Savacchio says she faced very few obstacles as a woman in politics, and the change was welcomed by most. In her 12 years in office, Savacchio says there are many memories and accomplishments to be proud of, including the development of Jerry Park and the Bayfront Highway, but she credits most of the success to work done behind the scenes. It resolved itself into people, people who were willing to partner with me in my administration, not only in government, but within the community. And because of that, uh, I think it was really a successful 12 years. In 1990, Jet 24 sales manager Mike George had the creative idea to honor teachers in our community. Since then, we've paid tribute to more than 750 local educators. Various faces from Jet 24 surprised teachers in the classroom through the years, including meteorologist Tom Atkins. Both my parents were teachers, so when the late, great John Kansas said, you should do this, I readily accepted. And uh, even after that, I became a teacher at Barron. So it was just a natural fit to go into classrooms and to present these awards, make people happy who very much deserved it for all their hard work and dedication. Yours truly has the privilege to honor teachers with the Golden Apple these days, but no one has handed out more of them than Jet 24's Mike Gallagher. I mean, that's going on 25 years, and some of these stories that I've had the opportunity to be a part of telling have truly touched me in a way that, that have made me who I am today. The Erie Police Department lost a patrolman in 1991, the last officer killed in the line of duty. Patrolman Richard Burchick's photo hangs in the lobby of the Erie City Police Department, the entire wall a memorial to remind residents and fellow officers of the sacrifice he and others have made on the job. It makes you a little more vigilant, makes you a little more aware this really can happen. 
Lieutenant Ken Merchant graduated from the police academy with Burchick, and together they joined the EPD in 1987. He was motivated. He was an excellent cop. Anytime there was a call and he was in the area, he was the first guy to show up. He did his job, and he really loved doing this job. On February 5, 1991, 39-year-old Richard Burchick was shot at the intersection of East 21st and East Avenue after a foot pursuit of a drive-by shooting suspect. Dozens of police agencies and emergency responders came to Erie for the police officer's funeral. Do you remember this face? It's 12-year-old Maria Sansone, Erie's own bringing your sports down to size. These days, Maria is a superstar on Good Day LA on the Fox affiliate in Los Angeles. Maria was discovered by Jet 24's Mike Gallagher during a slam dunk contest at the Civic Center. The best way that I can describe what was happening back then when we were doing Down to Size is that we went viral before viral even existed. We were doing this little thing on a, a small station in a small town and all of a sudden it captured the attention of the entire nation. Maria's first interview ever for Jet 24 was Buffalo Bills quarterback Jim Kelly. Others included Michael Jordan, Bill Cower, and baseball legend Tommy Lasorda. I was 11 years old, so it was a living, working newsroom with TV shows happening and newscasts going on. But for me, Jet was a playground. Sansone quickly got picked up by ABC Sports to do live sideline reporting for the Little League World Series which earned her the title the youngest reporter in the history of network TV. Friday, March 12th, 1993, a cluster of powerful thunderstorms in the Gulf of Mexico merged with a narrow band of snow and rain from the West Coast. The storm of the century was headed our way. In an unprecedented move, Jet 24 begins broadcasting hourly weather updates 24 hours in advance of the storm. I did my first update basically showing a weather map with nothing on it. Because, you know, and you had to tell these people, you know, brace for the biggest storm of your life. Viewers reacted by preparing for the storm. The superstorm system caused three days of crippling snow, whirling seas, coastal flooding, blizzards, tornadoes, and bone-chilling cold. It caused over $2 billion in property damage across portions of 22 eastern states, but Erie was ready for it. It was so well forecasted, the models actually uh, you know, forecasted a full two days in advance that this would be a monster storm. Meatville native Kelly Gaughan began her TV career in Elmira, New York, but Jet 24 General Manager John Kansas had plans to make Kelly our very first female co-anchor. I was only in Elmira for six months and he was kind of beating around the bush and I said, do you want to know how old I am? And he said, well, I can't ask you that. We're not allowed to ask those questions. And I said, well, I'll be 22 next week. He said, don't tell anyone in Erie. I will be crucified if they know how old you are. Kelly started out reporting, but within a year joined Don, Joey, and John, the boys club of the local evening news. She says they quickly became a team. I spent so much time here and I worked nights that the people that I worked with were really my family. Kelly and Don anchored together for nearly nine years. It's what I wanted to do forever, and so I was really happy that I had the chance to do it. Since leaving Jet TV, Kelly and her husband have been busy raising their three beautiful boys. 1995, Jet 24 Action News is live in the state capitol as Erie's Tom Ridge is sworn in as Pennsylvania's 43rd governor. Jet 24, the only Erie TV station to do that. For Tom Ridge, 1995 was a year to remember and the start to his goal to bring change to Pennsylvania. As I look back at that year um, and the opportunity to lead a great state, and I remember saying it well, and my cabinet got so tired of me saying it, but it was a mantra lived by. Every day we need to think, how do we make Pennsylvania a leader among states and a competitor among nations? Ridge would serve most of two terms in office before his political career would take a dramatic turn. The president called. I, I, you have to answer the call, but I love, I love, I tell everybody, I love being Gov. That phone call came following the September 11th, 2001 terrorist attacks. President George W. Bush named Ridge the first director of the newly created Office of Homeland Security. September 17th, 1996, Mill Creek Township and parts of the city are underwater. It's the biggest rainfall to hit Erie in a century. That was by far the worst that I've ever seen. Rick Morris was the city engineer in 96. 
Now he's the Mill Creek Township engineer. There were just fire trucks and abandoned vehicles all over. And then Mill Creek had 30 basement walls blown out. Rain totals from around the county ranged from 2 to 10 inches, with some areas of the county receiving over 7 inches of rain in 6 hours. Anything over 2 inches of rain in a 24-hour period is going to give you some flooding. But 4 to 7 to up to 10, you're going to have a big problem on your hands. Also in 1996, Erie native Bob Learn Jr. sets the all-time Professional Bowling Association record for total pins in a four-game TV final. He rolls the PBA's 10th televised 300 game in the opening match of the final round of the PBA flagship open. The game was televised live on ABC from Erie's Tulio Arena. Still to come, we move into the 21st century and continue to make history. Don't go away. Hi, I'm Anita Vogel of the Fox News Channel. I was a reporter for Jet 24 from 1993 to 1995. And we always used to joke that Erie was the center of the universe. And in fact, when I was there, some very famous people came through the city. Burt Reynolds, Charlton Heston, even Muhammad Ali. And I was there for the coldest day on record, minus 18 degrees. But I still have the warmest memories in my heart. Happy 50th to your news leader.